praise the lord for his grace and mercy on today amen hey y'all let's go yeah here we go <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the risen Lord. Amen. Listen, tonight we're going to be looking at the, uh, we're going to go back to the book of uh, Titus, Titus chapter 2, verses um, 11 through 15. Titus chapter 2, verse 11 through 15. Praise the Lord. Amen. For all of those who are coming in that I cannot see as of yet, God bless you. I pray God's choice, blessing, his favor his grace and mercy have been upon your life. What I want to do tonight, I just want to go ahead and read the word. I want to read and then we're going to pray and then we are going to unpack. We're going to read the word, then we're going to pray over the word and then we are going to unpack the word. Amen. Pray, let's read, let's pray, let's unpack. Glory be to God. Let's read. The Bible says, amen. The Bible says in the book of Titus, uh, chapter two, verse 11 through 15, and it reads, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that we might, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority let no man despise thee let's pray father this is your word and we are your people we are the sheep of your pasture lord we're praying tonight that you would move in a mighty way speak lord as only you can Thank you, Father God, for this time and this opportunity, Father God, to remind, to be reminded of the grace of God. 
Lord, your unmerited favor. We thank you right now, Lord. We understand we don't deserve it. We know we have not earned it. And we certainly are not entitled to it, Lord. But I thank you that the grace of God had looked beyond our faults and met us at the point of our needs. I thank you right now, God, for your grace, Lord Jesus. Lord, for the grace of God that continues to keep us, that continues to carry us, that continues to cover us, that continues to protect us. The grace of God right now, Lord. Lord, I thank you right now for that amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Well, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Thank you for your grace, oh God. Lord, right now, Father, move right now, Lord, by the power of your grace over our homes, over our neighborhood. Let grace, of, let the grace of God continue to flow. Lord, over our city, let the grace of God flow. Over right now, our state, let the grace of God flow. Over our nation, God, let the grace of God flow. Lord, over the world, let the grace of God continue to flow. Lord, we need your grace more than ever before, Lord. Continue right now to show us that grace, Lord. Lord, we believe and we trust that your grace, Father, is more powerful, is more potent than anything that man has to offer, the grace of God. And we thank you for it tonight. We bless your holy name. Lord, we ask you right now to come in right now and fill us up with the grace of God. Lord, we bless you. We thank you. We honor you. We glory. We magnify your holy name. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the risen Lord, somebody. Somebody ought to tell the Lord, thank you. Amen. For the grace of God. Praise the Lord. Good evening to my grandmother. Good evening. My dear, love you so much. God bless you. I pray and hope brother David is doing well. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. To Mother Howard and the family, God bless you all. I pray that y'all are doing well in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray that you all are doing well. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. So tonight, y'all, as we begin to unpack this word, we are at the end of the book of, uh, at the end of Titus chapter two, and at the end of Titus chapter two, Paul, he puts together a beautiful, a beautiful sentence, a beautiful conclusion to chapter two of the grace of God. Amen. And so let's just get into unpacking this, y'all. From verses one through 10, Paul has already shown us that the believers in Christ should beautify their lives with godliness and good deeds. And so we should live lives that attract others to be saved. Amen. And however, he right here, he concludes in this last portion, he reminds us that there is no amount of good works and deeds that we can do, however, that can save us. Us, and that everything we do is for the power of God, it's for the glory of God, but it's by the power of his grace. Amen. Let me just show you right quick. You got your Bibles? If you don't have your Bible, go ahead and grab that Bible. Get that Bible in your hand as we get ready to go over to the book of um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, showing us once again that it is by the grace of God that we are who we are. Amen. We ain't did nothing, y'all. It's all God's grace. God bless you, Sister Virgie. Good to see you this evening. I pray that your everything went well with you and your family. To God be the glory. Let me just go there for just a minute. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. I'm just going to read it and we're going to keep on moving, y'all. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15 and 10, the Bible says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God, which 
was with me. It wasn't me. It was the grace of God that was with me. Amen. I was moved on this past Sunday. Praise the Lord. When uh, my grandmother stood and started talking, it just reminded me and it revealed to me that it really wasn't them. It was the grace of God that carried them to even right now where they are today. You know, you got it. You got that same testimony. It wasn't you that got you to where you are. It is the grace of God that brought us to where we are. It had brought us thus this far, brothers and sisters in Christ. Listen, y'all. He goes on right there, back over in the book of Titus, and he tells them right there, for the grace of God bringeth salvation, the grace of God that bringeth salvation had appeared unto all men. See, the scripture teaches that it is his grace. It is his grace. And his grace, y'all, is not just an attribute. It's not just one of his characteristic or quality, but his grace is a person. And it's the grace of God that bring that has brought salvation to all men. I'm going to go over. I'm going to show you in the book of John, St. John, St. John, chapter one, verse 14 through 17. I just want to show you just right quick what the Bible says. It, the grace of God is not just a characteristic. It's not just a quality, y'all. The grace of God is a person. The run, let me run over here right quick. St. John chapter 1, and I'm going to begin at verse 14, and I'm going to read down to verse 17. The Bible says there in verse 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have we all, you hear that? Have all we received and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus the Christ. Amen. So when Jesus came into the world, when he came from heaven, y'all, he already embodied all of the grace and the truth of who God is. Praise the risen Lord. And so I say that because our works within themselves have no saving power. You understand what I'm saying? The works that have no saving power, the works that we do have no saving power. That is the reason why the Bible says, according to the book of Ephesians chapter two, verses eight and nine, for by grace are we saved through faith and that not of ourselves or yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, least any man should boast. We ain't got nothing to brag about because we haven't done anything. Y'all understand me? For the grace of God that bringeth salvation had appeared. Under. It was God's who grace who showed up and revealed it. It appeared to all men. In other words, at the advent of Christ, when Christ came to the world, he manifested himself to the world. The grace of God was manifested to the world. Let me go back over to John just right quick, because in John, that same chapter, John chapter one, St. John chapter one, uh, verse Four. I just want to show you right quick. St. John chapter, uh, chapter one, verse four, the Bible tells us in him was life. In him was life. You understand what I'm saying? And the, and the life was the light of men. That word light, when he says light, it also means revelation. God revealed himself. He was the revelation to men. He was the light of men. He revealed himself. He revealed his, his godness. That's what it is. He revealed the light of God. He, we, he, we were exposed to the light of God when Jesus Christ came into the world. Let me drop down to verse nine right quick. Watch what he said. Watch this. I'm still in St. John chapter 1, verse uh, 9. St. John chapter 1, verse 9. I'm going to drop down here. Watch what he says. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. That was the true light that lighted every man that cometh into the world. If you were there on Sunday, I, I had an opportunity to do a sermon there 
uh, just letting us know right there uh, that that Jesus Christ was the light. Even in that sermon, I talked about how Jesus Christ was the light, how he uh, is the life, how he rose. He uh, uh, he called Nicodemus forth out of the grave as the light and life of men. We can't do it without Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters. We have to have him. He is the light of the world. Amen. And so in John nine, uh, 1 and 9, the Bible says that uh, was the true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world. Now listen at this. He was in the world and the world was made by him. Now you hear that? He was made. God is the creator, but right here. So what does that say about Jesus Christ? If he made the world must mean he God, the creator himself, right? Uh, so uh, he was made and he, uh, the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. Watch this, y'all. He came to his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Amen. That's Bible right there, y'all. And so uh, Paul himself, Paul says, listen, I'm, I'm coming to you emphatically and I don't make any bones about it. It's, it's unquestionable and undeniable that Jesus Christ is God's, is God manifested in the flesh. Let me show you over here. First Timothy, and we read this before, but in first Timothy chapter three, first Timothy chapter three, and uh, we'll look at verse 16. Look at it with me for just a moment. And without controversy, that means Paul saying without any question, without question, without question or controversy, uh, great is the mystery of godliness that God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world and received up into glory. Listen, y'all, this verse from verses 11 through 14 is really all one sentence. If you look at uh, go back to Titus and look at Titus 11 through 14, it's all just one sentence. And it's in the Greek. It's just one sentence. And it all points to the life uh, of those who are saved by the grace of of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I, I had to say all those things because what Paul is getting ready to tell us in this sentence right here, which is more of a paragraph, but it's a sentence, amen. And so Paul, it's his proclamation here is that no one can work to be saved, but we are working because we are saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. Look at verse 12 right quick. Let's look at verse 12. Verse 12, he says, teaching us that, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Amen. Teaching us that that's what the grace of God, the grace of God has come to teach us how to deny ungodly lives, how to deny worldly lust. The word to ungodly, y'all, is an is to act in a way that's contrary to the nature of God. You know that it's to act in a way that opposes God. It's to be disobedient to God. It's to act in, a, in an irreverent way and disregard God's word, his commands, his laws, and his precepts. Amen. To, to, to be disbelieving in God. It's ungodly. Anything that's not like God, that's what he's saying. To And so the, the grace of God teaches us how to deny that type of lifestyle. Not only that, he said the grace of God teaches us how to deny worldly lust. You, those who 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 uh, uh, lives are, are just uncontrolled. You can't you can't control them. You can't corral them when it comes to their affections and their appetites, uh, which allow those things to dominate and to regulate their desires and their passions. Well, we got the grace of God that came from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and that grace of God teaches us how to deny those things, y'all. Because in the world, the Bible says, according to First John two and sixteen, that it, all that is in the world is lust of the flesh, lust of the 
eyes, it is the pride of life. That's what in the world. And these types of things, y'all, will be punished. One day there will be a judgment that will come, and that judgment will punish all of those who refuse to deny themselves of ungodliness and refuse to deny themselves the worldly lust. Amen. But they continue to pursue it and they go after it. I'm going to go somewhere right quick. In the book of Jude, Jude, just one chapter. Jude. Amen. Jude. And uh, it's just one chapter. And Jude is Jude. Let's get out here right quick. Praise the Lord. Here we go. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's Jude. Let's see here. Jude 14 through 16. Jude 14 through 16. Listen at this, y'all. And Enoch, also the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment. I tell you, see, it's going to be a day coming where God going to have to execute judgment. He's going to have to go in and he's going to have to punish those. He's going to have to go in and he's going to have to... Um, uh, 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 execute a um, a uh, hand over some judgment and punishment, and those they will be convicted uh, uh, dam damnation to those who have uh, continued to live in in the lust of this world and have continued to live their lives in ungodly ways. Amen. But he says Jude says to execute judgment upon all. And to convince, that word convince also means to convict all that are ungodly. See, it's right there in the Bible. Or ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Against who, him who? Against God. Okay. Uh, these are murmurers, grumblers, complainers, I always got something to say, complainers, there it is right there, walking after their own lust, walking after their own, the lust of this world, whatever it is that they, they their appetites and their affections, they walking after these things, all right? Uh, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in ab admiration because of advantage they constantly they always applaud and praise men so they can try to always uh get the upper hand they want to be patted on the back they want to try to uh gain favor and garner favor with man so they look for applause from men all right and but beloved remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our lord jesus Christ. Amen. And so we that's what we need to be focusing on, on the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so the contrary back in Titus, Titus said, we don't live like that. To the contrary, what we do is we live sober lives that we should live soberly. You see it right there in the text right there in chapter uh, two, verse 12. He said that we the holy, the grace of God, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the grace has Grace has taught us to live soberly, right? The word soberly right there, it, it's, um, it carries the notion that I'm allowing God to hold the reins of my mind and my heart. I allow God to direct my thoughts and my actions and by my behavior. He is my director. He takes the rein. You know, uh, y'all, I don't know anybody ever... Uh, uh, ever rode a horse, you know, they have reins and you take the reins and you kind of lead the horse wherever you want to go. God, in a sense, we when we live soberly, li uh, sober lives, we allow God, we give God the reins of our life. We let him take control. We're not out of control like those who live according to worldly lust, uncontrolled appetites and affection. No, we live sober lives so that what we can do is live lives that bring beauty and glory to the grace of God. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Then, he, so that I am not consumed with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, but my heavenly Father is leading me day by day. Amen. Let me just show you, just right quick. Book of First John, First John, chapter two. Let me go back over here, just right quick. First John, chapter two. Verse 15 and 17, 1 John chapter 2, 
verse 15, 17 said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. If any man love the world, the love of the father, you constantly desiring and you constantly uh, 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 chasing after the worldly love. The love of the Father ain't in you. You can't love the world, man. You can't love the world. He said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Watch this, y'all. Neither the things that are in the world. Any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passeth away. And the lust thereof. Watch this. The world passes away. And the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Only the grace of God can teach us to live this way. Only the grace of God. And so he goes on. I'm going back over to Titus, y'all. I'm going back over to Titus. He, he said, not only live soberly, but then live righteously. Only the grace of God can teach us how to live righteously. I, I, I got another scripture here right quick. It teaches us how to live righteously. The book of Romans in the book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 20, 21. Book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 20, 21. Just right quick. Amen. Only the grace of God can teach us how to live righteously. That is, it's all by God's grace. And remember, God's grace is not just an attribute. It's a person. And when he came, he came here full of grace and of truth. And he teaches us how to live righteously. Romans 5, Romans chapter 5, verse 20, 21. Listen to what he said. Listen to the word of God. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, watch this, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto each, <clears throat> even so might grace, might grace, might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord righteousness it has the grace of God teaches us now now hear me out the grace of God actually y'all is here to teach us how to treat one another Living righteously means living justly. It means I know how to treat my brother kind. I know how to be considerate. I know how to walk in truth by the grace of God. And I know how to be an equitable person by the grace of God. That is why Jesus said in Matthew, remember in Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, Jesus said to them, therefore, all things, whatever you would that men should do unto you, do you also unto them. For this is the law and the prophet. This is what's law and profit. What, what am I saying? The grace of God teaches us how to live righteously. Not only that, but the grace of God also, according, I'm going back to Titus. Now, back to Titus. The grace of God in verse 12 also teaches us how to live soberly, how to live righteously, and then godly. It teaches us how to devote our lives to God. It's an inward devotion to the Lord, which is displayed outwardly. That's the reason why we were talking about, see, this this, this doctrine should adorn duty because the grace of God is working in the life of the believer. Amen. So a godly man or a godly woman is one who has received Jesus Christ as the sacrifice and the atonement on that, when he got, died on that Christ cross as the payment for our sins. And we have accepted that payment. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. 2 Corinthians, amen? 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. I'm going to go there right quick and we can keep go back over here. But 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, the Bible said, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. It was through the grace of God. It's through the grace of God that we, or they, or you and me, that's how we learn to be righteous because he taught that to us by his grace. 
when Jesus came full of grace and truth. None of us knew how to live like this until Jesus came into my life and Jesus came into your life. When the grace of God came in, then you learn how to walk upright. You learn how to walk godly. You learn how to live soberly. Praise the risen Lord. Listen, this transformation and change doesn't wait, y'all. Watch what he said. He says right here in verse 12, I'm going to Titus, 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 2 and 12, Titus 2 and 12. He concludes by, in 2 and 12, he concludes verse 12 by saying this, it's, and it's happening right now in this present age. What is he saying? He's saying that the great the grace of God that's transforming us, it's not going to wait until we get over in glory. It's going to start working right now where we are right now. We should be living lives because we are being taught by the grace of God himself out to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. That needs to be happening right now. Every man and woman of God needs to be devoted to a life that pleases the Lord, to a life that's lived under his that grace and his mercy directed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Got to keep on rolling. Amen. Listen, y'all. Verse 13, he gets down 13. Verse 13, he say, what are we doing? And so because this is the way we live our lives, we constantly live in our lives and we live with a state of readiness. We're always watching and we're always waiting. Look at verse 13. There it is right there. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, of the great God, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Not only is he God, he's the great God, and he's our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we keeping our eyes open. We watching with expectation and anticipation. Lord, listen, I'm waiting on you. I keep my eyes open all the time. Lord, I'm waiting for you. I'm expecting you. You understand me? Let me explain. Some, Paul, Paul does a great job uh, explaining what expectation really looked like over in the book of first Thessalonians. And we studied this church. We studied first Thessalonians chapter four, verse 16. I'm going to just, let me jump over there just right quick. And I just want to read a little bit of that for you because it's so beautiful when he talking about looking for expectation. And this is what Paul himself had studied. He looked deeply into it and he said, and this is what he found. I'm going to start at verse 14 and I'm going to read down probably to 17. Amen. Maybe maybe even conclude the whole thing, probably on down to 18. But listen, he says in verse 14, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. We which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. This is a man who waiting on something. He got an expectation. He already, he doesn't, listen, this is how it's going to happen. This is what Paul is saying. I expect this to, I'm expecting this to occur. And I don't know when, but it could happen at any moment, but I'm ready right now. Mm, living, my grandfather used to always say that, living in a state of readiness. What a good word. Mm, 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 mm. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And Paul, he goes on. He said, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. He's waiting on God to crack them skies open and to sound a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise for he said this is his expectation this is his anticipation this is what he's looking for and he is absolutely certain it is going to happen i'm looking for the blessed hope mm, come on brother preacher oh that brother preacher and then y'all watch what he said watch what he says he looking for the blessed hope praise the lord now watch this i'm looking for the blessed then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. He included himself right there. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. <laughs> that is imminent. This brother, he, Paul, he lived his life as if he was going to, if Christ was coming back any day, I'll be here. He his he lived his life based upon the grace of God that when 
this was my expectation this is my anticipation and i'm ready to go right now right now in this moment i'm ready to go back to the Lord. then we 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 he listen you can't leave his brother out he's saying we which are alive he was thinking paul's mind was already set that jesus christ could come back any day and i am going to be in that number oh how i want to be in that number when the saints go marching in and paul was saying i'm ready right now i'm ready to be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the lord i'm in the bible to meet the lord in the air i'm ready and so shall we ever be with the lord then he tells the church after he says that he tells that thessalonian church he said listen y'all wherefore y'all comfort one another with these words go tell them that this is what's gonna happen go witness to somebody and tell them jesus is coming and we gonna be caught up with the lord we not listen this is where this man was and he was confident he had full assurance he was confident in his anticipation he was confident in his expectation he was certain there he had full assurance that jesus was coming back and he was coming at any moment why because the grace by because of the grace of god y'all we should live just like this we should live in anticipation expecting the day when the great god and the savior of our lord jesus christ is going to return when he will say to us according to matthew chapter 25 when you'll hear jesus say well done my good and my faithful servant thou hast been faithful over a few things i will make you a ruler over many come on in enter into the joy of the lord come on in here because i've already prepared your place that's when you start living and expect you have an anticipation of expectation or you have an expectation of anticipation i'm ready right now and he will return at any moment and when he come i know he gonna collect me because he's already purchased me and bought me with his own blood deacon henry love a sang a song and i love that song that deacon henry sang so much he said i am redeemed i've been bought with a price and jesus have changed my whole life and if anybody asks you just who i am why don't you tell them that i am redeemed that is a mighty good song right <laughs> Woo, praise the lord praise the lord mm, mm, mm. let's go on y'all i'm gonna get come on let's go back over back over to titus let's go back to titus let's jump down y'all and let's look at verse 14 let's let's look at verse 14 as he come and so and so because he then he says in verse 14 he says listen who gave himself for us that word gave right there that phrase means to ransom it was a, it was a merchant term he sacrificed himself he didn't he didn't ransom something else that he purchased no he came and he sacrificed his own blood he sacrificed his own body he Woo, Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. He said he gave himself. He didn't come up here. He didn't listen. He didn't ask you to go to the cross. He didn't ask me to go to the cross. He didn't ask my family to go to the cross. He didn't ask your family to go. He didn't ask my kids to go to the cross. He didn't ask your kids to go to the cross. No, he went to the cross himself for me, you, your children, my family, your family. All oh, he went to the cross for all of us. He ransomed himself. He sacrificed himself. Watch this, verse fourteen, that he might redeem us from all iniquity. Y'all, I'm in this Bible tonight, and I love the Lord. Y'all, I feel like I'm right here at the church. I, I know I'm at the church right now <laughs> i know i'm having church with y'all tonight listen here y'all listen this is the place where two or three are gathered together in my name i'm already right there in the midst this is it having fellowship with the lord and i love the fact that our lord and savior he gave his life so he could redeem us from all iniquity i said every drop in every bit don't matter what you've done in your life it whether it be past or present or future when jesus christ died on that cross he paid for your sins and he paid for my sin jesus paid it all all to him i owe sin had left the crimson stain but he washed it 
Ooh, bless it, bless it, bless it, bless it, bless it. Oh my God, my God, man, I'm telling y'all, I'm about ready to run up in here tonight. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He washed it white as snow. The Bible said not only that, y'all, he came in there and he cleansed us from all iniquity and purified unto himself a peculiar people zealous unto good works. In other words, he purchased, he bought us back out of the marketplace of sinfulness. That's where we were. Romans 3 and 20. Amen. Romans chapter 3, verse 24. Praise the risen Lord. Praise the risen Lord. My God, my God. Mm, what a word from Jesus. What a word from the Holy Ghost. Romans 3 and 24 lets us know being justified freely by his grace, y'all. Being justified freely. You ain't pay for it. Quit acting like you did. You ain't bought nothing. Being justified word justified mean he made you right and it was free to you he the one who paid it all lord have mercy jesus being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in jesus christ been redeemed man it was in jesus christ lord i thank you tonight lord lord i thank you. and he purified us to himself that word purify mean to cleanse or to sanctify and he did it unto himself. The phrase right there unto himself, meaning to do it for his own purpose. He did it unto himself. You didn't do it to him. I didn't do it to him. He did it for his own purpose. He did it for his own self. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So that we can be a peculiar people. That phrase right there, peculiar, means that we are his own personal private possession. You don't even belong to you. You belong to the Lord. Somebody ought to say amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, God. Woo, my, 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 my. You belong to the Lord, man. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell, it all belong to God. And you belong to the Lord. You heals. Watch this. And he created us so we could, the grace of God is transforming us. It is changing us so we could be zealous of good works. That's what he says right here. It's in the text, y'all. I'm not making any of this up. He says, zealous unto good works. In other words, we'll be willing, ready, and able by the power of the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to do some shown enough good works. That's right. I say it's shown enough good works. Amen. Listen, let me take you over. I'm going to let somebody else explain it a little bit better than I can. The book of Ephesians, in the book of Ephesians, praise the Lord, the apostle Paul does a marvelous job at explaining how the beauty of God's willing, his willing to make us ready for some good works. Go to Ephesians chapter one, just right quick. We're getting ready to kick it on in church, but go to Ephesians chapter one, just right quick. And look at verse seven. We're going to read from seven to 12. And I want you to look at this re this readiness, this zealous unto good work, how he he made us ready and willing and able bodies to do the good work of God. Watch this, y'all. I'm starting in verse seven. Ephesians 1, 7 through 12. Ephesians 1, 7 through 12. Look, watch this. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Ooh, help me, Holy Ghost. Mm, mm, mm. According to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom, in all prudence. It's so good to me because your mind can never fathom the grace of God, how it works out all of the details, all of the questions are answered. That God, he did it in himself and there's nothing that he left out. You gotta hear what it's about a spirit, man. Ain't God didn't leave any thing out it was all toward his wisdom and that word prudence mean he put some thought into it god damn get some get prudence about this thing he put something in this this wasn't just no random 
a made up just uh uh you know how we do things on the fly this wasn't that type of deal this ain't that that type of uh uh the, the redemption and your and his grace is not just a a, a quick uh fly by night something no this thing he he thought through this and he took the time to redeem us by his own grace by his own blood he took time to do this he walked out the details he went down into the smallest of all of the the threads and the particles like a seamstress putting it together he wove he he had made every fabric put it in the proper place intentional listen this one friend say Throughout the whole time of your life, God intentionally wove every piece of fabric exactly where it needed to be. You don't have to wear it. When God tells you that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That's why you don't need to chase the world. You got the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. I got to go on. Lord, have mercy. Woo! My God, this is good to me, y'all. And so we're here about having made known unto us the mystery of his own will lord have mercy according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed there it is again i told y'all there it is again he purposed it in himself we didn't have to tell god we didn't have to counsel god neither one, we didn't need he didn't need a trainer he didn't need a teacher he did it all within himself Nobody had to give him any type of counseling when it came to his own work and his will. Amen. He purposed this in himself. Uh, nobody had to encourage him to do anything. Listen, that in the dispensation of time or in the fullness of time or when time was right and ready in his own time and the fullness of times that he might gather together in one thing. Listen at this. All things in one person the man jesus christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth in heaven and in earth even in him and who jesus christ in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated I mean he did this before we ever came on the scene before you were born before i was born before our parents were born before there was a let there was or before there was an earth and a creative of earth and a and a heaven and an earth all this was done way before this was done in eternity past predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things there that is again he worketh all things after the council that's why i was telling y'all earlier after the counsel of his own will that we should be to the praise of his glory god said i was getting you ready <laughs> oh my jesus i was getting you ready willing and able to do my good works long before time ever began long before he ever said let there be god was already preparing us lord i thank you jesus for his glory praise of his glory who first trusted in christ jesus or in the lord now let me close verse 15 says so here's what we need to do he gave us some instructions because of the power of god's grace in our life he said these things y'all speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority speak exhort and rebuke with all authority watch what he says in verse we back over there we back at uh titus chapter two watch what he said at the end let no man despise thee i'm gonna take you one one more scripture as we close one more scripture i want to show you something first timothy chapter four and ten. First timothy four and ten don't let no man despise you first timothy four and ten says this and every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another. Now, this is him telling. All of us got the gift. Jesus Christ paid for everything. You got the gift. Even so, this that's why in this way, for this purpose, even so, for this person, purpose, for this reason, even so, minister the same one to another as good stewards 
of the manifold, that word manifold, I showed y'all, the word manifold mean a lot of power. I told y'all, God's grace is like a thread. Every fabric, every word, every letter, every day, every hour, every second is put together in the perfect time and position, the manifold grace of God. There's grace, there's layers of grace for every situation. And he's telling us right now, he said, listen, you speak, you preach, you teach. If you got to reprove, if you got to correct them, if you got to rebuke them, you do it with all authority because this thing was granted unto you by the great God and the Savior, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Don't you let nobody despise your walk because you've been called by the grace of God. Walk in your calling. Walk in it. Period. Point blank to the end, y'all. Listen, I love y'all. I pray that this is going to be, I'm talking about tonight. Listen, I'm talking about the power of God's grace. And I pray, I pray this has been a blessing to your heart, your soul, your mind, your spirit. You walk in the grace of God. God have it has given you the ability to walk, to talk, to preach, to speak, rebuke, correct, exhort. Listen, it's all by his doing. And he did it all. You just need to walk in the grace of God. Walk in the power of God's grace. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you tonight for your grace, your mercy. Thank you right now for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, that you redeemed us. Thank you that you paid the price. Thank you that your grace is the only thing that can save us. Thank you, Lord, that your grace is teaching us right now, Father God, how, Heavenly Father, not to live ungodly and how to not to live unrighteous and how not to live according to the lust of this world teaching us oh heavenly father every day your grace is teaching us oh heavenly father how to live righteously how to live godly how to live soberly and i thank you right now in the name of jesus lord oh i bless your name father i praise you right now because i know i don't deserve it and i know i ain't worthy i know father god you are the one who redeemed and ransomed and gave your life for all of us ain't none of us did nothing to earn or to deserve what you have done for us lord and that's why we magnify you tonight. We praise you tonight. We lift you up. We exhort you right now because you are the one great God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we choose by grace, by faith to put all of our confidence in you as we look for that blessed hope. We look for that day when you shall return, Lord. We, I said, just like Paul, Lord, when that day that we, oh, Heavenly Father, will be caught up with you right now. Yes, Lord, I'm saying it just like the apostle said, Lord. I don't know when it's going to happen, but we're going to be ready when it happens. Oh, thank you right now, Lord Jesus. Father, bless your name tonight. Touch our hearts. Touch our mind. Live in us. And we will let that light shine. So me and my see our good works and glorify our father, which is in heaven. It's in the name of Jesus. We pray and ask it all. Amen. And amen. Listen, man, God bless y'all real good. I pray that something has been said tonight. A word has been spoken to encourage your heart your soul, your mind, your spirit. You, cause We all need encouragement. And I want you to know tonight, before I go off of this live feed tonight, that the power of grace is enough. God's grace is sufficient. It's more than enough. No matter what you're going through right now, you got the grace of God on your life. Do you understand what I'm saying? Listen, man, this ain't no game. This ain't no joke. I'm not playing. I'm telling you like a T.I.T. You got the great, the power of God's grace in your life. And where sin abounded, <laughs> grace much more abounds. It'll never trump the grace of God. No matter what you're going through, you remember one thing. You've got the grace of God and Jesus Christ paid for it so you could have it. It's who he is. Amen. And you got him. Praise the Lord. Listen, y'all, I got to invite somebody to know Jesus as Lord and Savior on this evening. Let me tell you, good evening to my family. Y'all, I've been going on. Praise the Lord. And this word has gotten so good to me. Good evening. Amen. To Deacon Henry, to the Fry family, if y'all out there, to Brother Mike, Sister Roz, God bless y'all. To uh, my own dear sister, Sister Kathy, God bless you so much. To all of those who are out there, Mother uh, Mother Howard, amen, Mother Woods, Mother Virgie, God bless y'all. Love y'all so much, amen. Listen, I got to extend an invitation to somebody who might not know 
uh, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the great God who gives grace, who is grace himself, our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. They might not know him. So I want to give them an opportunity to get to know him, to make him the Lord of your life. Listen, if you're out there, you have made this uh, life changing, life altering decision. Now is the day. Tonight is the night. Now is the time right now. Listen, don't wait another moment. Don't wait another second. Don't vacillate. Don't procrastinate. You know why? Because time is not on your side. All of us were born into darkness. We came into it, but the light of the world came in. So when the light of the world came in that I spoke of over in John chapter one, he left us with no excuse to continue to walk in darkness. But our Heavenly Father, he loves us so much to so what he does. He extends grace. That's what this is about. The grace of God, the mercy of God, who did something for us that we could not do for ourselves. And so we are all in need of that. You know why? Because we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We need the God of grace. We need the God of grace. We need him. It is imperative. we got to have him. You know why? Because the Bible says to us that the wages of sin, we've all sinned. So the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through jesus christ our lord you say well pastor why do i why am i still here then if the wages of sin is dead it's because god is long suffering that's what the grace is all about it's mercy it's favor shown to those who have really forfeited all rights to favor you don't deserve it god he given it to you because of himself remember i read to you in Thessalonians, he did it to himself right and so we don't deserve it he did it that's the reason why peter could say with certainty in second uh second peter chapter 3 verse 9 that's why he could say that god is not slack concerning his promises as some men count slackness but he's slackness but he's long suffering toward us not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance so you wonder why you're still here why you're still alive why you're still able to work and breathe and go and do the things you do travel and uh spend money and have nice cars and clothes and all that stuff that the world can uh what that the world deems as being uh what's important and uh what's significant to them the reason is because god is extending grace but our god even our god still has to be a God of judgment and justice, which I read to you in Jude. And one day you got to pay for that. You understand? You got to pay for that. But our God is loving. So, And one day when I, you stand before our God, remember, he said that God is the wages of that sin is death. So all of those who have crossed God, who have decided to reject his grace, and that's really what you've done. You've rejected the grace of God because you pushed God away. You rejected his grace. You're going to pay him for that. You're going to pay God for that. And he is the eternal judge. And he's not going to allow crime to go unpunished. That is just not going to happen. So you need to come on over here now and get this ransom, get this sacrifice. Remember, I just told you all in the book of Titus that Jesus redeemed us. He paid the price for us. We were all in darkness. We were all in sin. But Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Remember, I just sang that song for you. So listen. I want you to come get it today. You say, Pastor, okay, all right, all right. How, how do I get it? Well, I'm glad you have. The Bible says that the thing that we have to do is we have to confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord, that he is Lord, that confess with our mouth, believe it in our heart that, G that God raised him from the dead, then you shall be saved. So with that word, when we start confessing Jesus Christ, Lord, I confess you, Jesus Christ is my Lord. Jesus Christ is my savior. Jesus Christ is my redeemer. Jesus Christ is my God. The more you confess it, the more and the more you confess it, the more it becomes faith in your heart. You start trusting it and you believe it. And with the heart, confession is made unto righteousness. Now, you hear what I'm saying? The more you say it out of your mouth, because uh, it's filled, it's in your heart. So that which is in your heart comes out of your mouth. So the more you say it, you start believing in God, you start confessing it. And what happens is that as you start trusting and believing in God, what he does is God, he puts that sin debt, that I mean, put that payment for your sin debt. He puts the blood of Jesus on your life to cleanse you. He, I just read that for you in the Bible. It purifies you. It sanctifies you. It cleans you. It purifies. It redeems you. And once he puts the blood of Jesus as your payment on the deposit, oh, right down as the payment for your sin. Now all of your sin debt is now wiped away. Just read that for you over in the book of Romans also. So listen, this is your chance. This is your moment. This is your opportunity to get the sin debt paid. You say, Pastor, why did God do that for us? Because he loves you. He loves you. And he loves you too much to leave you in the situation, the state and the condition that you're in without giving you some grace. You better hear what I'm saying tonight. That's the reason why he did it. 
And he backs it up in John 3, 16, when Jesus was telling, he was talking to uh, his disciples and uh, uh, they came to him. The man name uh, came to him. I believe his name was he was a he was a rabbi. Make me want to go over there and look at John 3, 16. Mm, I don't want to get you want to get you off right there. But Jesus was talking to a guy that slipped to him by night. OK, let me go just straight right quick. I want to tell you this. So I don't know that. A man by the name of Nicodemus, a Nicodemus slipped to Jesus by night and Jesus had a conversation with him. And he told Nicodemus the reason why God does this is because he loved him. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And that's what Jesus told Nicodemus. And that's what Jesus is telling you. Whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Nicodemus wanted to know how to be born again. And Jesus Christ told him, you got to believe that he is the son of the living God. Listen, God bless you real good. I hope and pray that you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior tonight. I've given you scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture, verse after verse. I've taken the time to sit down and break down to you precept on precept, line up on line, the power of the grace of God. It's your decision to make tonight. God bless y'all real good. Love y'all so much. Y'all know how I do it. Listen, man, you better go with God because God have always gone with you. And I'm out. Praise the Lord. Oh, oh, oh.